Hi everyone, it's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farms. Today I want to talk about how to grow straw flowers, how to harvest them as a fresh cut flower, how to harvest them as a dried cut flower, and also how to wire them. So let's just get started at the beginning with how and when to sow them. Straw flowers are an annual flower for most of us and they're winter hardy to zone 8. I'm here in zone 6B, so I consider them to be a hardy annual, and I've found over the years that they really like to be set out into the garden in very early spring. So I start these guys really early. I'm starting them in late February under lights. I surface sow the seed, bottom water them, and I just always have them growing under the lights. That's really what they want. Once they get established, I harden them off. You can actually see these specific plants in a video I made on hardening off seedlings. But after you harden them off, you can actually transplant them into the garden six to eight weeks before the last frost. Yes, they can take cold temperatures. They really are a hardy annual. And here we are the first day of summer and they're blooming for me. So it really sets you ahead of the season to have more blooms early on by sowing them earlier. They really can handle it. So now they're off into the garden and they're blooming. And how do we harvest them if we want to use them as a fresh cut? It's a little bit different. Um, depending on whether you want to cut them fresh or you want to cut them dried. So I'll get my snips out here. So what I'm looking for for a fresh cut is a few things. I want to see at least three to four sets of the petals. These actually aren't petals technically, they're bracts. But I want to see three to four sets of bracts open, but I do not want to see the yellow pollen yet. The yellow pollen tells me that bees have probably gotten to it, which significantly decreases the vase life. And what I can also do to test if this flower is ready to be cut is to do a wiggle test, which I'll do right now. I'm going to place my fingers about six inches down on the main stem where I want to cut and I'm going to wiggle. And it's staying pretty strong and upright. I know that it's time for me to cut this flower. But take the flower in front of it. It's only got about one set of bracts unfurled. If I place my hand six to eight inches down on this and wiggle, that guy is going all over the place. If I were to cut this flower now as a fresh cut, what would probably happen to me is that the neck would actually curve in the vase. It would look like they just melted or wilted over. So wait on that if you're looking for a fresh cut. So I'm gonna make the first cut to the central stem, leaving about four side shoots. Excuse me, leaving about four side shoots. Now this sets up the plant to produce a lot of usable side shoots for me all throughout the year. Of course, just with any flower, you're going to strip all of the foliage off. It's less for this stem to hydrate. I'm also going to take off, um, if there's any really small flowers on the side, there's a really good chance that these are also going to flop in the vase. So I'm going to take them out now and place that immediately into fresh, cool, clean water. And just with any cut flower, always harvest in the early morning, the late of the evening, so that they don't have to be exposed to a lot of heat when you're harvesting them. So now let's move on to what if we want to harvest them and use them as a dried flower. I want to pick them a little bit sooner than what I'm looking for as a fresh flower. I'm looking for about two to three bracts to be unfurled. I don't want to see any yellow in the center. I'm hoping I'm still staying in the frame while I'm walking forward. Here is a really good one. I see two sets of petals or bracts unfurled. The center is still tightly closed. I can cut this and hang it upside down in a warm, dark place for two to three weeks, or I can wire the head. So I'm gonna make the same cut Once again, strip all the foliage. The side guy can go. Now this little guy, since we're using it for dried flowers, I'm gonna save him. But take all of the foliage off. No need to bring that inside with us. 
It's a beautiful day out here in the garden. I am, of course, getting bitten by mosquitoes, even though I'm completely covered up. But that's just the way it goes around here. If you guys have Asian tiger mosquito in your garden and you have found an organic control for it, please let me know what, what that organic control is. <laughs> but okay, so this guy is ready to be hung upside down. You can bunch it with other straw flowers and just forget about it for two to three weeks and you'll come back to it and it will have opened up a little bit more. And that's one of the reasons why we don't want to see any yellow when we pick these. If I were to pick this and just even a little bit of that yellow is showing in the center, it opens more as it dries and it kind of just makes the flower look blown out and weirdly shapen. The more yellow that you see when you cut it, the more open and weirdly shaped and it looks at actually the petals almost curve backwards and onto themselves and if I accidentally pick a couple flowers like that I end up just throwing them away once they're fully dried they're just not as pretty to look at so lastly I guess we can talk about wiring straw flowers so here's some that I've had drying inside and even though they're not fully dried you can see that their stems have gotten pretty brittle and pretty weak so I'm not going to really have a lot of flexibility in working with these later on. If I were to try to work these into an arrangement and give them a lot of beautiful movement and flow, they're just going to break apart. So in that case, we need to wire them. So if your intent is to just wire some straw flowers, you can pick just the head. Once again, I don't want to see any yellow pollen, but it can be small. It can be big. Let's see. This one looks good. So I'm just going to take a head here. I'm going to get some floral wire and let's go inside together and we can wire a head together. Well guys, it's so beautiful I decided to just bring my supplies outside and do this. But all we need to wire a straw flower, I've already done one for us here, is some floral wire. I'm using 24 gauge. This is just what I grabbed from the drawer. 22 would also work really good. So we want to start out with a length of about 24 inches long because at the end of the day I want the stem to be about a foot long. I just eyeball it. Don't worry about it. And you always want to wire straw flower heads when they're fresh. This will not work once they're dried. They'll really just, the whole thing will fall to pieces. Now we've got about 24 inches there. I'm actually going to bend this in half, creating a U at the top. Okay, so I've got two points of contact down here for our straw flower head. Here's the one that we picked just a few minutes ago. I'm going to take these two ends and stick them right through the middle of the head. Now I can just pull them down and just pull until you can no longer see the wire. And now that is a very sturdy wiring job. I can twist it a little bit if I like. And now I am going to go ahead and hang these upside down to dry. And if I knew I was going to be using them in something special like wedding work, I would also go ahead and take some uh, florist tape, wind that around there, make it look like a real stem. But that's really all there is to wiring straw flowers. I have seen uh, some people, they just stick the wire, like let me show you, they would just stick the wire right into it and then they say it dries around the wire. I've tried that. It's true, but it's just not as secure as poking it through the head. So especially if this is going to a bride or something like that, use the two points of contact and the U going through the head. Well guys, that's all there is to it. And you know, I just think straw flowers are absolutely beautiful. Don't they make a wonderful gift of what the season was about? You know, a wonderful memory. You can make wreaths, you can make little corsages, you can make flower crowns, you can put these on a Christmas tree. I think the possibilities are really endless. They hold 85% of their color. They really don't lose much in terms of volume. And there's a reason why these guys are the number one dried flower out there because they're just wonderful, aren't they? <laughs> well, until next time, happy gardening. Bye.